Tatiana Blair, one of my old campers, no less. Oh, that's special. How about that? How about it? I can't take any credit whatsoever for that voice. Not one bit. But let's take a look at the starting lineups as we get set for this big matchup between Howard and North Carolina Central, a huge MEAC Monday night matchup between two teams who are looking to position themselves in the upper echelon and try to really uh, put themselves in a position where they don't have to do a lot of laborious work in order to compete for the MEAC championship. So let's look at the starters first for the Eagles of North Carolina Central, who come in at 12 and 13, 7 and 4 in the MEAC. They'll lead off with Jordan Perkins, a 6'1 sophomore who is averaging 3.2 points and 2.5 rebounds, along with 4.3 assists. Larry Miller, Randy Miller Jr., pardon me, is a junior at 6'2, averaging 12.5 points, just over two rebounds and shooting 42% from the field at the other guard spot. Larry McKnight Jr., the redshirt senior at 6'4", averaging 9.7 points, 3.6 rebounds, and shooting 44% from the field is up front. Also, Zachary Douglas, a 6'8", senior, is at one forward spot. He averages 9.4 points and just under eight rebounds while shooting 43% from the field. And second team preseason all MEAC center, Rashawn Davis, a redshirt senior at 6'9", leads the team at 15.2 points and just over nine rebounds while shooting almost 66% from the field. That rounds out the quintet for Lavelle Moulton, who graduated from North Carolina Central in 1996 as one of the accomplished players in that school's history. His jersey has been retired. He won championships in the CIAA and in the MEAC as a player and has been one of the premier mid-major coaches in his 10th season. This is a guy that was voted all CIAA first team and Division II South Atlantic all-region team when he played in Durham. For Howard, starting off at one guard, for it is a three-guard lineup for Howard. Chad Lott, a redshirt junior from Shreveport, Louisiana, at 6'4", 190. He'll be joined in the backcourt by Charles C.J. Williams, a junior from Richmond, Virginia, at 6'6", 188 pounds. First team all MEAC this season and is really playing good enough to certainly keep that projection in place. Xavier Akinwe Ole, 
from Delta State in Nigeria at 6'9", 215 pounds. He gets to start in the center position. Miak, rookie of the week, back in November for the week of the 20th. And he goes by the name of Savior. Zion Cousins, a 6'8", 195-pound sophomore forward from Upper Marlboro, Maryland. Man's one forward spot. He leads Howard in rebounding at just under eight rebounds per game. His season high, a 15-point performance the last time we were here against Morgan State. And R.J. Cole, the MEAC preseason player of the year, 6'1", 185-pound sophomore out of Union, New Jersey. He became the fastest bison in history to score 1,000 career points. Also named for the Lou Henson Award midseason watch list. He had 20 points on Saturday. Struggled shooting, but he made all 10 free throws. And it can't be underscored enough. Howard missed 14 of their 36 free throw attempts on Saturday. They make half of those. They pull off the W against North Carolina a &T. So that's where we are right now. It's Howard, it's Central, the tap is up, and it's controlled by Howard. And into the offensive zone, Kevin Nickelberry is going to give one of his seniors on senior night the start. That's Justin Cotton, and he knocks down the shot. How about that? Howard leads 2-0. It's senior night, feeling it. Central with the basketball. Probing Howard's zone defense right now. Down on the baseline. They pass back to the outside. Now the kick to the top of the key. Swing to the wing for the open three-point. Look splash! Knocking it down is Randy Miller Jr., who's from Odenton, Maryland, and he makes it a 3-2. North Carolina Central lead. Jones with it in the offensive zone. Gets it to a wide open. C.J. Williams, who was so open that the jumper nestled between the rim and the glass, and it will go to North Carolina Central. That don't have nothing to do with being that open. <laughs> it's just everything to do with depth. Depth, huh? <laughs> The shot was just off. It, well, just a little bit, you might say. Perkins with it in the offensive zone. He gets it back. They go down on the inside, and a nice finish. The feathery shot that time by Rashawn Davis. The Kent State transfer makes it a 5-2 central lead. Chad Lott on the penetration gets to the rim, and the two-handed layup is good. Chad Lott is one of my favorite players on this Bison ro roster. I mean, we've Gone back and forth, whether considering him a glue guy is inadequate for all the things that he does for this team. He does just about everything, but that is what a glue guy does. He just does it in spectacular fashion. It's a long three ball from out front. Goes down that time by Randy Miller once again. So it's 8-4, North Carolina Central over Howard. Having played just over two minutes here. In the first half, Mark Gray, Monica McNutt, and you, welcome to the HSRN app and hubison.com. Cotton with it off the curl to the top out of the double team, gets it into Fred Savior. Savior with the spin move, clears from space, and he scores. 8-6, North Carolina Central with the lead in the basketball. Pounding the rock right now is Perkins. Now to the inside on the drive. Zachary Douglas loses it. Here comes Lott. Drops it off to Cotton. From the wing for three, it's off the mark. And the rebound cleared that time by Davis. Mitchell gets it up. Ball fake. Drive to the lane. Drops it back. The floater, yes. Beautifully done that time by Davis. Nifty little move there by Rashawn Davis. Almost thought he was going to travel, but good awareness to understand where he was and opt for the floater from a little bit of distance. 10 Six is the count. Howard has the basketball, looking to whack into the four-point deficit. Lott gets the ball on the left wing, steps up, puts up a three ball, a lot of contact, no foul. Rebound collected by Davis, and now off to the races goes Perkins. Now they swing it. 
There's a ball fake. Picked up. Perkins gets it at the free throw line. Open look created off a ball fake, and it's good. I don't know if Chad Lott got faked out, but he definitely lost his footing. Well, it looks like Bison are opting to show a little bit of a 3-2, but your one is sliding over to create some traps on the wings, which is leaving the middle wide open. It's the second time that Central has just scored from the same spot. And Charles Williams creates a, I believe they called it a two, a, a two point from long range. Makes it a 12-8 contest. Off the curl right now, it's Perkins. And he feeds beautifully on the inside to Davis for the jam. If you're the Bison, somebody's got to put a body on him. Now, they're absolutely taking full advantage of being able to get to the middle. 14-8 is the count. Howard trails by six with the basketball as Williams gets it. To the top to Jones. Jones going to launch a long three, and he's got it. Jalen Jones. Okay. Hitting from the top of the key. Straight on money shot. 14 to 11, 15, 20 and counting in the first. Crossing over with the trigger dribble is Perkins. Floater in the lane, no good. Gets his own rebound off the rim. They drop it back to the inside and Davis is finished. You can see right now that when it comes to Beeston, it is all about Rashawn Davis. I mean, he's been a grown man on the inside. Davis with six of his team's 16 points and Howard takes a timeout. Well, he's got a great body he's got yes. a gr obviously he looks like a baller i mean he's got gr great shoulders he's also shown tremendous touch so far in this ball game and then of course the athleticism with the baseline yeah that was nasty it was pretty yeah he he, he got the most out of that one so that stops the clock with the 15 minutes and nine seconds left to go here in the first half and again it can't be underscored enough the outstanding job that Lavelle Moten has done in his 10 years at the helm of North Carolina Central's program. I mean, he's got 167 wins at that time, which is really amazing because he was the coach that sort of stewarded the transition from being respected as an elite Division II basketball program into becoming a pretty good mid-major basketball program right now. And, you know, Central is, I believe, the first HBCU to win a national championship at the Division II level. So, Mona's just done an outstanding job. Commendable, for sure. Obviously, he takes that opportunity to heart as an alum, but it's that sort of enthusiasm and energy that I'm sure attracts this type of young man that he wants to coach. Indeed. So, RJ Cole now checks in for his first burn. They get it to Xavier at the top. Cole gets it back, splits the defenders, drops the dime, gives it to Jones. Jones goes up with the finish off the baseline and Howard comes out of the timeout, cuts the gap. Well, check that, that was Zion Cousins who checked in. And it's a 16-13 North Carolina Central lead. They have the basketball. And stopping on the dime with the feathery soft jumper that goes through as Central grabs a 18-13 lead thanks to Perkins. And then Charles Williams can't handle the pass from R.J. Cole. It goes out of bounds. And hmm. on the Howard turnover. And that's what got him in trouble Saturday, quite frankly. Turnovers, the inability to make free throws. And they got beat on the inside as well. Off the curl, speak, speaking of getting beat that time. Yeah, Zachary Douglas comes off that one completely unbothered. There's not a lot of pressure. There doesn't seem to be a lot of bumping or communicating on the defensive end for the Bison. I mean, the Eagles are literally getting clean looks like they're running practice drills. Well, that's been what's happening for Howard the last three or four games is Williams forces a spin move, individual effort, no good that time, and here comes Perkins. They tried the floater, and it's 
tapped aside, and here goes Williams looking to cross over, driving the lane, goes to the rim, and he scores for the end one. <laughs> C.J. Williams plays with an edge, and he attacked the rim with ferocity, and he scores on the end one. The body control, it's fantastic. He's, we already know about his ability to get up off the ground. He's got great bounce there, hanging and hitting that layup, absorbing the contact trip to the free throw line. So trying to cap the conventional three-point play is the preseason all-conference two guard, and he does. Chad Lott now checks back in as C.J. Williams checks out. 20 to 15, North Carolina Central leads and they have the basketball. Zachary Douglas almost had his pass stolen away. Wide open look from the wing goes bottom this time by Randy Miller Jr. That's his third three ball of the game and it's 23 to 16. And RJ Cole gonna beat the defense. Gets to the rim, can't finish it. Here goes Central in the opposite direction. It's Miller Jr who is called for the charge and a tough charging call that time. So let's run it back before we get into this next possession for Howard. The offense for the Eagles has been incredibly efficient so far this game. We just saw Larry per or Jordan Perkins, excuse me, knock down another three. He's averaging 4.3 assists per game, and then Randy Miller hits that three. It's, he's shooting 42% from the field, but... If you're the Bison, you've got to attack Davis. You've got to make him defend. You understand that he's a shot blocker, so go into your tricks. A very simple shot fix. And from the backside, Howell puts up a jumper. No good. R.J. Cole takes a pass and scoops it to the hoop, and he scores. Howard within five right now at 23-18. to 18. Ball movement. And R.J. Cole looks like he has his legs back. And off the turn, the curl, and the rejection that time. Larry McKnight tried to go with the tricky layup over the head. And Xavier was right there to deny access. So Rashawn London checking in right now to replace Jordan Perkins. And London will inbound. Gets it back outside to Larry McKnight. Coming to get it is London. London between the circles, picks up his dribble, drops it inside the lane. The soft 15 footer falls that time by Jabri Blunt. The Pittsburgh native is on the board and it's 28 to 15. Seven point central lead on the inside, forcing it up and rallying it through that time for Howard is Princewell Anasike, the freshman from Lagos, Nigeria. And it's 25 20 now, inside of 12 minutes to go here in the first half. Central goes into the inside. They try to feed it to the baseline and the pass intended for Davis lands in the hand of Howard. It's Cole with it. Swing to the wing. Jump shot off the mark that time. And then the putback is good for the Bison. And just like that, Lee cut to five at 25 to 20. Pounding defense, ball stolen away, knocking them to the backcourt by Cole. Cole, not a, another one. R.J. Cole doing a great job harassing Rashawn London. And that will take us to our under 12-minute media timeout. Boy, R.J. Cole comes off the bench and gives Howard a spark as the Bison trail 25-22 to North Carolina Central. This is HBCU Basketball on HSRN, the voice of choice in Howard University basketball on hubison.com. For all the latest news to keep you in the know, follow HU Athletics, hashtag bleed blue. 
on Facebook at Howard University Athletics, at HG Bison Sports, on Twitter and Instagram, wherever you get your social media news, HG Bison Sports is there. 11 minutes and 16 seconds left to go in the first half. Monica McNutt, yours truly, Mark Gray. Thanks for hanging out. Our final time at the Burr this year. It is senior night for these guys. Yes, it is. Last home affair. Next week, join us from lovely Baltimore, Maryland. As it's Morgan and Howard on MEAC Monday for the final time here on HSRN. And we've got too many steps on the drive that time. As Rashawn London tried to force his way in. And he turns the basketball over. The slow walk for R.J. Cole into the front court. Off the curl, he finds Ronald Batea for the jumper. It's off the wall. Rim no good. Rebound tapped out of bounds by Chad Lott. And here comes Andre Toure, the freshman from France, who will replace Kyle Foster. And Zion Cousins heads out as well. Toure, if you haven't seen him, is a very talented but green player. One of those players that's been in influenced by the success of Tony Parker here in the States and a beautiful finish that time by Central. And here comes C.J. Williams for the jam. So much athleticism. He got up so high on that one. He didn't even get a chance to really hear the rim rock. He just kind of dropped the ball in. Boy, he's just got bad intentions when he gets up to the rim, doesn't he? I mean, his eyes light up. He gets excited. I, I would, too, if I had his ability. That's true. And North Carolina Central gets a three ball from Zachary Douglas, the 6'8 senior from Landover, Maryland. And just like that, the lead back to six at 30 to 24, North Carolina Central. Ten minutes to go as Williams with the fall away for three. High off the rim, no good. Rebound ripped out of the hands of Torre by Blunt for Central. Blunt with the ball, fake, shuffles his feet. And that's too many steps. So Savior checks back into the ball game uh, for Anasike for Howard. So here comes Cole in the backcourt. Walks it up to the front. Crossover by Cole. Tripped up. Floater wow. goes through. The control to still manage to get that one up. Understanding that he was on the brink of losing his balance. Played through the contact for sure to cut the gap to four. Central still has the basketball. Jordan Perkins. Drops it off to Reggie, Reggie Gardner Jr. Back to the outside. Ball fake by Blunt. Blunt gets into the lane, puts the floater up, and it's true. Boy, that's just a classic case where offense is better than defense that time. And Central leads 32-26. I mean, we anticipate this one being a pretty high-scoring affair because clearly Howard is not interested in keeping the Eagles out of the paint, and they have been efficient, to say the least, there. To say the least, as Williams splits the defenders, can't get the bunny to fall, but he earns two free throws after Jabri Blunt picks up the foul. And for Blunt, that's number one. So here comes Williams who is just an unbelievable athlete who just happens to play basketball. I mean, he's just phenomenal. And he rattles the first free throw home. 32-27, 8.45 to go here in the first half. Chad Lott back, back into the contest. Torrey goes out quickly. 
So one more left for Williams. And the second one up, the second one is true. 32-28, 8.45 and counting here in the first half. And off the curl taking it is Nicholas Fennell, who drops it back to Douglas. Wide open look for three off the mark that time by Reggie Garden. They go back to the wing for another three, and it is true. Zachary Douglas benefiting off of the second chance opportunity by the Eagles. Now defensively, the Bison have switched to a man, but you can't give up second chance opportunities in terms of rebounding. Central stand in the man to man defense as well. Chad Lott gives it off to Savior. Savior to Williams. Williams with the ball of his head gives it to Cole. Cole out of the double team. Long cross court step pass. Chad Lott tries to go up for the tomahawk jam and he misses. And the long down court pass into the hands leading to a three that goes splash for Blunt for Central. And we have a central player back behind the play on the baseline. That'll be Zachary Douglas, the Landover native, who lies out on the floor under the baseline. And we'll take a timeout. Seven minutes and 46 seconds left to go here in the first half. North Carolina Central 28, Howard 28. This is MEAC Basketball on HSRN, the voice of choice, and HUBison.com. Makes history one game at a time. And coming up on October 5th from Cambridge, Massachusetts, for the first time ever, we got a battle of the real HUs. Harvard University hosting Howard <laughs> University in New England. I do not think. The other HU would appreciate being replaced, nor does Harvard likely participate in the discussion on HUs. Welcome to the club, then. Mm. I'm sure the HUs would like to have them. Mm. You do a lot worse than adding Harvard University to the HU club. It's it, Yeah. Anyway, the drive to the lane that time by R.J. Cole, but we'll have a... Foul out on the wing, and this foul is going to go against Julian Walters, the redshirt senior guard from Madison, Wisconsin, who just checked in, made his presence felt by picking up a foul. Rather dubious way to make your presence felt, but how he holds the ball is Jalen Jones. Drops it off on the near wing to Kyle Foster. Foster with the crossover, runs into the double team, gets it to Savior. Savior puts up a jumper from about 19 feet, and it goes through 38-30. Less than 7.20 to go and counting here as the ball slowly matriculated into the offensive zone. Julian Walters drops it off for Fennell. They get the ball down on the inside, and the baby hook is off the mark that time. And off to the races go to Bison. It's Cole. Gets it to Foster. Free throw line jumper to Chad Lott. Wide open. He misses, but it's deflected out of bounds off of North Carolina Central. So here comes Zion Cousins and C.J. Williams back into the game as Kyle Foster and Jalen Jones check out. Williams, Cole, Cousins, Savior as Cole gets a wide, well, a three ball that was way off the mark from way downtown. And Central going to launch one from downtown that is pure by Jabri Blunt. But I tell you what, Blunt comes in and he's certainly anything but bashful when it comes to hoisting the long-range jumpers. I thought you were going to do a better play on his last name, Mark. No, I was going to leave that alone. <laughs> <laughs> just so many different places you can go right now. I'm just going to stay in my lane. Anyway, C.J. Jones has his arm almost ripped off, and the whistle does blow as Jabri Blunt picks up the foul, and for Blunt, that'll be his first. 
Jabri's parents should have named him Frank. He could have been Frank Blunt. He could have been. That would have been. That would have just said it all. Mm. Just walk into the room. Anyway, Cousins is going to be left open for three that time. No good. Save your battles for the rebound. Rebound tap back outside. Collected by Lott. Lott to the wing. Drives it to Foster. Back outside to Williams. Williams going to put up the jumper. It rattles out. Rebound collected that time by Davis. Davis drops it off, and here comes Fennell for Central. Off the curl. Little ball fake. Stepping on the inside, and a beautiful finish by Davis. What ball work and spacing in the half court. Kevin Nickelberry has to take a timeout. Rashawn Davis runs the floor so well. Zachary Douglas was involved in that play as well on the outside corner. They move without the ball and they play off of one another well. Davis got the defensive rebound on the other end, pitched it out ahead to his guards. Penetration almost got stuck in that corner. Upon further review, keeping that dribble alive, you got your big cutting down a wide open lane, and it's a jam. It's almost criminal when you see somebody that big who can move that fast, and it's fluid. So just like that, the lean is gone to 13, and the double-digit deficit has been a dilemma, no pun intended, for Howard over the last week. Both games last weekend in Florida, they trailed big, by as many as 20 points in some cases, yet they were able to come back. The same held true to form on Saturday, and they were able to grab the lead on a couple of occasions late in the second half, but they were not able to finish. Howard's men just hadn't figured out that digging a deep hole wears you out at this point of the season. Oh, but this is the same crew you expect to get hot in Charlotte. Well... Actually, they'll be in Norfolk. Norfolk, excuse me. <laughs> anyway, off to the races. Here goes Central. And out of the curl, it's Julian Walters. And we'll have a foul that'll go against Zachary Douglas. Got to be deliberate and focused when you're setting those screens. Yep. So Howard down 13 with the basketball, approaching five minutes to go here in the third. It, excuse me, in the second. Well, actually, first half. in the first half. Do you agree that they should make it all uniform? Yep, I, I do. <laughs> I really do. I'd love to see four 10-minute quarters on the men's game. I like that quarter. Thing. You mean like in the NBA? Well, they only really got five-minute quarters because nobody really plays hard. And the ball stolen away. Here goes C.J. Williams, and he throws it down. 43-34. Howard back to within nine. Four and a half to go in the half as Central looks to slow things down. Pounding the rock right now. It's Walters. Drops it off for Douglas. To the wing they go, Central does with Walters. Back outside, ball fake, Gardner. It's called for too many, or actually, we'll have another illegal screen. Mm, that is such a silly, ultimately it's a turnover. Mm. So, Howard's going to inbound with a chance to cut the gap to perhaps six with a three. Cole walks it up into the front court, drops it off for C.J. Williams. Williams going to penetrate, go up, over, under, over his shoulder, yes, with a layup, and he draws the foul. <laughs> what did he do? Well, one more time, Mark. What was that move? He went up, under, and over to make a layup and he draw the foul. Man. <laughs> a, another fantastic display of athleticism for sure. Remember the old uh, Jordan commercial? This is something you cannot do. <laughs> That's true. That's something you cannot do. 
43-37. Howard once trailed by 10. They're now down by only six. Into the half-court set right now go the Eagles. Out of the double team, the ball fake. Now the swing, and we've got too many steps that time taken by Julian Walters, who's incredulous after that call. And that'll take us to our under four-minute media timeout. And while they take one on the floor, we will take one as well. It's North Carolina Central 43, Howard 37. It's Big Monday, MEAC style on HUBison.com and HSRN, the voice of HBCU Sports. The new celebration. Hey, there's no I in impossible, Joe. There is, there's two. Shh. Welcome back to Bird Gymnasium where Howard University continues trying to dig themselves out of another double-digit hole. And they've done a masterful job to this point. I'd have to say that uh, C.J. Williams, the real C.J., has finally shown up. He's got 13 points to lead his team right now. Two North Carolina Central players with 13 on their own, but just the aggressiveness and the attitude that Williams is playing with tonight certainly changes the way that Howard has approached things when he's on the floor. I agree, but I'd like to see a shift maybe on the defensive end. Point. Cole gets a high screen, and man, he took a lot of contact, wasn't able to finish, and off the scrum, here comes Central. On the break, swing off to the wing. The three is just th is short. Savior's going to pick up a foul from the backside as Larry McKnight just frankly beat him down the floor, got position, and the big Howard University Center from Nigeria picks up the foul, and that would be his first. Larry McKnight, Jr. So McKnight goes to the free throw line, shooting two shots. And the first one is up, and it goes through. McKnight from North Miami, Florida, began his college basketball career at Palm Beach State College. 6'4", 230-pound forward. Takes three pounds. Release, rotation. And it clanks off the rim. RJ Cole connects it. Goes with the wraparound into the offensive zone. Howard down 47, 44, 37. Chad Lott, ball fake, fall away. Yes! And he backs down the court, shaking his head, saying, no, you can't check me. At least in that possession, that's the case. 44-39, less than three minutes to go. Ball fake, and a steal. Here goes Cole, leaving it for Williams, who gets to the rim and will have a basket that scores by the goal team. And Central simply cannot keep up with C.J. Williams filling the wing. And we've got a foul on North Carolina Central as well. So it was a continuation? Or it was a goal team and a foul? A goal so and one foul, play? yes. All right. And Williams converts. And Howard now trails by two. 44-42. Under three minutes to go. Central in the offensive zone. Now looking to pass out of the double team right now.
Anasiki doing his best to guard. Unable to contest without fouling, but I like the attack by Blunt. From the Matador defense school that time. As to the free throw line, Jabri Blunt knocks it down. 45-44 at the 205 mark. Xavier back into the contest for Howard. And CK checks out. Second free throw falls through for Blunt. And it's 45. We'll make it 46 44. And here comes RJ Cole into the offensive zone right now. Picks up his dribble. Gives it off to Williams near the top. He looks to turn and square. Ball fake on the way up. And they'll say that Williams took too many steps. He did lose his footing that time. A little, little two-step there. I didn't think traveling was a call anymore. Mm, right? Because you were watching James Harden? And various European basketball players. You know that Euro step? Yeah. You're not, typically, that's not a Euro step at the top of the key outside the three-point line into a jumper. Larry McKnight drops it off on the curl. Jabri Blunt takes it to the rim and can't finish. But he draws a foul. This seems to be the formula for the Eagles. Pressing the issue. Can the Bison defend the paint without <laughs> sending Central to the free throw line? So that foul goes against Howard's Savior. And for Savior, that's his second. C.J. Williams comes quickly out with 1.32 to go. And Blunt's free throw draws iron. So Central with a 47-44 lead. Under a minute and a half to go. Kyle Lott goes with the ball. Fake the up and under move and he scores. 47-46. Such a classic and effective play there. Fundamentals, right? Love them. Central with it. Blunt. Drops it off in the back. And we got a whistle on the inside. <laughs> and that foul goes against Howard. So Toure now checks out. Zion Cousins checks in. They go to the inside. Howard steals it away. Beautifully done that time by Patea. Patea is going to take it all the way down. I Lay up a temp off the mark. You don't need that scoop. You don't need that scoop. Dribble one more time. Absorb contact. Boy, and there was a push off that was gotten away with that time by Julian Walters. And he couldn't make the jumper. So Cole collects it for Howard. Crossover between the circles. Looking to turn the corner. There was a lot of contact that time. And finally a, a whistle as Rashawn Davis. So Davis, instead of just high hedging and allowing Julian Walters to get back under the matchup with RJ Cole, he bumps him out. It looked like Cole was coming back under, so he did. He just needed to hedge to deter from a shot coming off that screen initially and then allow the matchup to resync itself. So R.J. Cole goes to the charity stripe. First one up, first one through. We're tied at 47 with 35.1 seconds left to go here in the first half. HSRN fans, check it out. Omar Bashir has the... Soon to be award-winning halftime show coming up. A lot of big games in the SWAC and the MEAC this evening. And the worldwide headquarters is all over it. As we go inside the last 30 seconds, North Carolina Central has the basketball and looking to turn off the curl is Walters. Walters drops it back outside to Blunt. Blunt gets to the end town on a couple of defenders. And his strength, boy, he chiseled. That young fella got down there amongst the Howard trees 
and he brought his own lumber to earn himself a couple of free throws. <laughs> yes. He got football arms right there. He, he does, and he has been a thorn in the side of the Bison defense because they just don't seem to know what to do with him when he gets in the paint. He knocks that first free throw down. We got tied at 48 with 15 and a half seconds left to go here in the first half. Second one up, second one through. 49-48 Central with the lead, Howard basketball. Chad Lott with under six, he's gonna go baseline, kiss off the glass and it's true. 50 to 49, and Howard has the lead at the half. Wow! What a beautiful move to the baseline line to conclude the half as Howard, who was down by 10, leads by one. That's going to do it for the first half here in the nation's capital. We'll send it on the HSR inside to the headquarters with Omar Bashir. And come back and join us at hubison.com for the second half as Big Monday continues here from D.C.
Houston could see saw for sure, and that would just be great for all these fans in here for the last uh, home game here at Burr. And how, how is R.J. Cole comes out firing, and they battle for it, and it leads to a Zion Cousins dunk. Powered up 52 to 49 as we open up things here in the second half. Into the offensive zone now. The contact and the one handed floater is a nice by Perkins for Central. 52 51. Howard with the lead in the basketball. RJ Cole joined by Jalen Jones. Cotton, Williams, and Savior on the floor right now for the Bison. And just like that, it's Chad Lott from the baseline over two defenders to score. And then Central races it down quickly. And the big fella can't find his way to the basket. Wow. As, you, you got a story there. Sean Davis doesn't finish at the rim. Well, he was pestered a little bit by the Bison defense. And I think he's better when the ball comes up up top as opposed to low where he's got to corral it and wrestle it away from those pesky defenders. So the slow walk into the front court right now for Perkins. Perkins out of the double team, drops in the back for Douglas. Back to Perkins. He's open for three. It's off the front of the rim, and Davis is going to pick up another over the back foul. And for Davis, that's going to be three. That's a big foul. That's a big deal. He's got to be careful and understand what he's doing. That ball, I mean, it's so sensitive as a rebounder where you're actually leaning over versus when a ball has come to you. And that time, guilty of over the back. Howard nursing a three-point lead. Cousins at the top. Drops it off to Williams, off to Curl. His fall away barely grazes the rim. And off the rebound, C.J. Cole picks it. Excuse me, R.J. Cole picks it up. But Zakari Douglas runs into the Howard guard. And he picks up his second foul. Number two on the team for the Eagles here in the second half. And Howard will end down. Lott gets it to Savior. Savior to the top two. C.J. Williams. Williams has his pass deflected off of Cole and off to the races. And a beautiful drive with the crossover that time by Jordan Perkins. And the sophomore from Greensboro pulls the Eagles to within one. At 54-53. They say speed kills, and Jordan Perkins, an example of that, completely under control, understood that C.J. Williams was either going to try to steal that basketball or block it, so he beat him with the foot speed. So a beautiful pass out of the double team, and Cousins couldn't finish. And now the drive and the contact and the finish is pure that time by Randy Miller. How unfortunately for them, there was no foul call. And they trail by one at 55-54. 17 and a half to go in regulation as R.J. Cole gets it. Crossing over, driving baseline. Drops it to Savior, and he puts it up off the glass, and it's through. I know R.J. Cole is quick and nifty with the basketball, but I'm, I'm at a loss as, a, as to why Rashawn Davis didn't put his foot on the baseline and cut that off. Fundamentals, look at you, coach. <laughs> Down to the inside. Oh, wow, Davis. What a move that time. Can't quite finish. And R.J. Cole takes the contact. He can't finish. Ball in the hands of Cousins. He can't finish. And the rebound lands in the hands of Chad Lott. Lot for Howard with the basketball with the crossover, gets it to the lane, picks up up and under, kiss off the glass, rattles around, no good. And what is the call? Was it a shot clock? What about you, number 23, Jalen Jones? No, I, I can't believe it was a shot clock violation. Because that shot hit the rim. Nonetheless, under 16 and a half to go. Ball in the hands of Douglas. He drops it off on the wing. Now Douglas gets it back. 
and loses it out of double team, but we're gonna call a foul against Howard. And that'll be against Savior. And Savior's gonna go to the charity strike. Prince Wall and CK checks in. Chad Lott goes to the bench as well as Ronald Bethea checks in for the Bison. Well, this lineup on the floor right now for the Bison doesn't have as much size. But Rashawn Davis has not had the start that he had in the first half to kick off this second half of action. Although Ron Bethea, he's, he's not exactly the tallest, but he's got lots of bounce to his game as well. Right. And they go to the baseline with it to the Eagles, and they kick it back to the outside. The long three ball goes off the mark by Randy Miller. I am such a fan of Jabri Blunt, though, Mark. I mean, that kid is just a workhorse. Comes up with that offensive rebound and is taking the trip to the free throw line. Yeah, he's, he, he's shown that uh, unalienable skill, that, that, that grown man skill. We just go in there and rip the ball down. You attack and he caps a three-point play, a conventional three-point play, which puts the Eagles back up by two, 58-56. Inside 16 minutes. Next dead ball will be the media timeout. R.J. Cole goes to the rim that time. He can't make it. Rebound collected by Lott. Lott forces it up. He goes three and one. And that's going to take us to our under 16 minute media timeout. Sean Davis is fourth. Sean Davis picks up his fourth as we go to break tied at 58. The Bison and the Eagles on Big Monday, Miak style here on HSRN, the voice of choice of HBisonSports.com. So R.J. Cole goes to the charity strike. Looking to break a 58-58 deadlock here as we return to the bar. And his free throw goes true. 59-58, Howard leads. 15-45 and counting. And he employ a little freakish half-court junk defense. That seems to have discombobulated North Carolina Central. There's a double team and a whistle and a bailout call against the fan. Those are those calls are so tough because I actually thought that we were getting ready to get a offensive foul call on Larry McKnight because he was holding the ball with one arm and sort of kind of shrug off the defense with the other, which is not a thing. I was thinking something more along of a five second turnover. But the double team had gotten there. I think we got to check the rule book. I don't know. I know in the women's game, five seconds is not what it used to be. There aren't too many fouls in any game that are what they used to be, quite frankly. Anyway, Larry McKnight out of the double team, plays a little catch at a time with Perkins. Perkins to McKnight. He puts up the jumper, and this one rattles in and out and goes out of bounds. Yep, it did. Francois Anasike. That ball looked like it was off of a Howard player, and it was not according to the guys in the striped shirts with whistles. The one that had better position under yeah, the basket. Yeah, they did. So Chad Lott will slowly walk it up. Howard leading 59-58. 15 minutes and counting here in regulation. To Ray. Now on the reversal down to Anasike. Baseline, nice layup, too strong. I do like that move by Anasike, though. Creative, but not in a gaudy kind of way. 
Here's a baseline pass, kick back outside for a wide open three that's off the mark. Zakari Douglas couldn't finish, and here comes Howard with Lott. Lott drops it off to Mathea. Mathea gets it back outside, check that. That's Kyle Foster who's checking into the contest. Lott with it. They go down on the inside to Anasike. Out of the double team. Well, he um, he almost lost it that time. Classic case of the ball coming down below the waist. And a uh, big player actually shrinking himself because of the position of the basketball. I also don't know that he was in a position to make an offensive move without picking up a offensive foul. He's the kind of guy that is strong and is willing to turn and with his elbows up. I think that's an opportunity where a touch comes inside, you force it back outside, then maybe it comes back to you after you switch to the defense. Chad Lott with the wraparound, gets to the rim, puts it up, off the glass, and it's true. I'm ah. such a fan of Chad Lott. The sprawling floater gives him 12, and Howard leads by three. It's 61-58. We approach the 14-minute mark to go here in regulation. From the wing, it's Randy Miller. Miller cut off, drops it back to the outside. Open look for three goes bottom that time by Blunt. Mr. Instant Offense. He's a big time. He's a big time component to this Eagle squad for sure. He's the microwave like Vinny Johnson from back in the day. And here's Chad Lott, picks up the dribble, swings it off to Tere. Tere going to take us all the way in for the dunk attempt. He misses, but he draws two shots. And incredulous is Zakari Douglas. Douglas keeps having these reactions to these calls, but I'm there's a more fundamental option. I get it. You got the hops. You want to meet me at the rim. I get it. But if you're worried about whistles, then let's attempt a charge. Let's go straight up with both hands and block. And then that kind of contact isn't called versus you trying to swipe at the ball and you catching. Who does he catch? Versus you catching Teray's arm. So Andre Teray at the tar at the charity stripe. Pardon me. Looking to break a 61-61 deadlock, and he misses the first as it is too strong. And CK checks out. Cousins checks in. As do Williams and Cole for Howard. So Bison going to the all-conference backcourt as Teray breaks the second. We remain tied at 61. Less than 13 and a half to go in regulation. As Cent Central brings it up. Into the offensive zone now, London. London gets it back, swing to the wing. Wide open three ball, off the mark that time by Randy Miller. And then we'll have a whistle on the inside. Nicholas Fenwell flying in, Nicholas Fenwell flying in for the offensive rebound. It's so imperative that teams understand the importance of boxing out, especially when it comes to rebounding, because that hook, hook and hold, as the officials are calling, is something that they're really watching closely. So I believe that five goes on Chad Lott. And for Lott, that would be his first. As Central inbounds into the backcourt, they get it into the front. They think about the three from the outside, and now the wide-open look from about 20 is good that time. Um, open look for Randy Miller, and it goes all bottoms, and Central up by three now, 64-61. Cole picks up the dribble, drops it back to Williams. He knocks down the three ball, fall away in front of Kevin Nickelberry. On Howard's bench. Well, so far, C.J. Williams has had a quiet second half, but remember, he was the key cog in the machine when Howard went on their run in the first. He now has 20 as Howard leads by, well, as we are tied at 64. Baseline reversal, the feed, the pause, the layup, and one that time. Beautifully done that time by Jabri Blunt. There's your boy, Frankie Lumber. Yes. Totally man, look renamed the kid. Trunk. trunk. He don't have arms, man. Those aren't biceps. Those are trunks. As in like tree trunks. Man. And so Blunt now with 23 of his team. 66. Make it 24 as he rattles the free throw home. Man. We knew he was doing work. 
all of a sudden he's approaching a 30-point night. It's because those buckets aren't flashy. Lot with it in the offensive zone, tries to force the pass and is stolen away. Off to the races goes Central. The swing to the wing, the ball fake, the spin it to the lane. Kick back outside and now backing it out is Fennell. Fennell gives it off to Julian Walters. Walters swings it across to Miller who misses. And then a rebound on the inside, put back up by Blunt. And he draws another foul against Howard. And this time it goes against. I mean, just Savior. the activity, the activity in his ball game. Like he's always near that basketball. He gets off his feet quick, and then he's strong. And that's going to take us to our under 12 minute media timeout. North Carolina Central 67, Howard 64, with 11 minutes and 42 seconds to go in regulation. MEAC's Big Monday continues on HSRN, the voice of HBC Sports and HBCSports.com. So Howard, who is down by as many as 10, who took a lead and now have come back, find themselves trailing. And it's a dangerous moment in the game if you're a fan of Howard because so often, so many times this year, you've seen the game get away at moments like this. It'll be interesting to see how, over the next three to four minutes, how Howard handles a team with the championship pedigree who's not going to blink no matter how many shots you take at them. Well, we talk about growth over the course of a season, right? And so being able to close, obviously, is pro the best sign of growth. You walk away from this one with a W. But if that's not the case, oh, my. If that's not the case, then you want to see this team compete, right? Yep. Perkins missed the first free throw. He sinks the second. And so now it's 68 64. Perkins, blunt. Check that. You're right. That was blunt. You got your arms mixed up. And now it's just stolen away and off to the races. There'll be no mistake in that one, though. Out in front of everybody. And throwing it down with authority is Blunt. And he continues his one-man wrecking ball assault on Howard. He now has 25. And suddenly it's a six-point central lead. And another errant three ball this time, which is collected by North Carolina Central. Here they go once again in the offensive zone now. Julian Walters. Walters collects it back. He plays a little catch this time with Randy Miller. Miller between the circles, pounded the rock, picked up by Cole. Drops it back to Walters. Walters between the circles. Now on the wing. It's lost, cut off into the inside. And a beautiful shot that time by Zakari Douglas. Did you see what he did? That was so textbook. Not only was the pass high, but it, he kept it high. It never came down, and he gets a nice soft touch around the rim. That is fantastic. 72-64. 10 in County. Cold to the rim. Oh, up and under. This oh. is true. 72-66. 10-15 in County. North Carolina Central with the lead in the basketball. Julian Walters. Runs the show. Off the curl, he'll drop it off to Nick Fennell. Top with it to Douglas. Feeds it on the inside, and this time the pass is just a little bit too strong. Classic case of leading the person you're passing to astray, and it's a turnover. Howard will take the ball the opposite direction. Howard's got to string together some quality possessions, and they've got to get stops on the other end. And here comes Cole, who beats the defender. And this foul goes against Julian Walters, and that's number three on Walters. Howard inbounds, and he gets it to Cole. 
Cole in front of his own bench tries to force the pass on the inside. Ball battle for collected by Lott. A lot of contact down there. And Chad Lott just works his way to, I believe, the free throw line for a two-shot foul. Yep. So this foul is going to go against Nick Fennell. And for Fennell, that will be his second. Check that, make it his first. Here's Chad Lott. Lott with 14 points on the evening. Looking to cut into the six point deficit. And his first free throw is true. As much as the highlights have seemed to favor the Eagles, this is still very much a ball game. 9.45 to go. An opportunity to chip away. This leaves a four point game again. That's a one-and-a-half possession game. <laughs> one-and-a-half possession. One-and-a-half. <laughs> 1.5. 1 <laughs> yes. I just like the notion that we can have a 100-point <laughs> college basketball game. Well, there's very little defense, which I am not crazy about. But, you know, whatever. Here's off the curl. The drive. The point blank look. No good. Rebound follow. Put back. <laughs> Beautifully thrown. A nice little up and under that time. This, By Blunt. this kid will not be outworked tonight. That was three offensive rebounds in one possession. And R.J. Cole is hot on his way to the basket. No foul is called. And it's 74-70. Less than seven to go. And once again, it's Blunt. Looking to create, drops it on the inside, and it's deflected out of bounds by the Eagles. And Howard gets the basketball. Don't forget, next Monday night, we are live from Baltimore. It's Howard and Morgan. And our season finale is C.J. Williams open for three, no good. Rebound into the hands of North Carolina Central. Eagles racing it up quickly. And Blunt's going to be left over, and he puts up another three, hits the front of the rim. I would like to see the Bison get some more transition opportunities. I think for them, setting up in this half court set has not served them well over this last little stretch. And here is C.J. Williams with the drive all the way, and he's hacked to the action, oh, shoot a pair. And Walters will pick up a foul for the fourth time. So, looks like Julian Walters is headed to the Pines for Lavelle Moten. And to the free throw line goes R.J. Cole. First one up. Splash. Eight minutes and 12 seconds left to go. Howard down 74 71. Placing CJ Wilkins, number four, Jordan Perkins. So here's Lott. Excuse me, here's Cole, pardon me, at the charity strike for one more. Looking to make it a two point game if he can knock this one down. And it's off the back of the rim. Good block out. Yeah, tremendous block out. That was a great job that time by Randy Miller. Got to get the shooter. Exactly, and he does just that. Pounding the rock right now is Perkins. Wide open look from just beyond the elbow by Zakari Douglas, and it's 76-71 North Carolina Central inside of eight minutes to go. Cole with it for Howard to the baseline. He finds Lott. His jumper no good. Kick back outside. Three ball goes off the <laughs> mark by Bethea. And the rebound collected by Blunt, who collects another foul against the Bison as that takes us to our under eight minute media timeout. Seven minutes, 33 seconds left to go in regulation. It's North Carolina Central 76, Howard 71. This is HCBison.com and HSRN, the voice of HBC Sports. Known for our own D.C. style, D-City Smokehouse strives to serve the best barbecue in town. 
The MEAC basketball tournament is coming up March 11th through 16th in lovely Norfolk, Virginia. The pot of gold at the end of the rainbow is a trip to the field of 68 from both the men and the women. For more information on how you can have your face in the place to be when the March to Madness tips off in Norfolk is meaxport.com. North Carolina Central by 5, 76, 71. 7 minutes, 33 seconds left to go here in regulation. And really, in the first half, it was about the personality and the mere presence of C.J. Williams. Here in the second half, it is all about Mr. Blunt for North Carolina Central. Yeah, he has been a force to be reckoned with, and the Bison, quite frankly, have not had an answer, and it's not because he's necessarily having an incredible offensive day. He's just literally outworking anybody that's around him. He's got 29 points, Doug Blunt, on 9 of 13 shooting from the field and 8 of 10 from beyond the three-point arc. R.J. Cole with it in the offensive zone. The Cousins to C.J. Williams, and Williams is able to induce a foul this time on Nicholas Fennell and for Fennell that's his second. 8 of 11 from the three point line. I was like that boy has not hit eight threes. <laughs> no from the free throw line. I'm sorry. <laughs> I literally was like what? That was real quiet. <laughs> and Williams now has definitely cooled off. He's only got 20 and he misses the first free throw. Central will slowly walk it up with Douglas. Douglas drops it to the top of Peter Blunt. Blunt's going to turn, go up. Oh, two defenders. He misses the shot, but Torrey's going to foul him on the backside. Oh, well, check that. That's uh, Zion Cousins. So Cousins picks up the foul that time. And for Cousins. That's his third. So blunt back to the line. First one up. First one through. Give him a cool 30. We talked early in the half how he was on a 30 point night. Do we dare say 40? How much time we got left? 35, mm, 37. Mm, I, you know, Mark, the way he's playing. That's what I'm saying. And he makes another free throw. Give him 31. And the lead is now 7, 78-71. And the slow pull away seems to have started for Central. Does Howard have an answer? Cousins at the top. Fakes the three, backs it out, gives it to Williams. Williams with 10 seconds. He's going to get to the free throw line. He knocks down the jumper. Well, he just probed at the top. Took a couple of dribbles and rose to a point where he was above the defender, knocks it down. So give CJ Williams 22. It I seems though, in general, and I, I'm sorry to cut you off, Mark. Williams has the ability to score, but Howard's a little on the chill side to be the team that's trailing. Wow. What was that rebirth of the pool? What is <laughs> What's this? <laughs> What was that? Uh, was that Diggable Planets? You know anything about that? I don't that? know what you're talking about. Oh, man. You never went down to the hip hop museum. I did either. not. Oh, man. Nope. We got to take you down there next time they pop up. Literally. If it works in my schedule, sure. Great look it was. Jeremy Beaver and the folks down there, Red Summer, do a great job with that pop up exhibit. At the line for the Bison, should be the double bonus. It's number two. Wow, so Howard will shoot two free throws for the balance of this game. That's huge. Now, can they cash in? It's been a dilemma for them all season. Cole pounds the rock three times, and he sinks the first. 78 74, 627 to go. Another. Oh, 
Cole takes three more pounds. Stares at the square. Splash. 78-75. The walk into the offensive zone for Perkins. Off the curve. Coming to get it is Fennell. Fennell drops it back to Perkins. Off the curl. The drive. And the foul as Randy Miller is fouled by R.J. Cole. And that's Cole's first foul. He'll be number nine on the team. So we're going to have a double bonus being shot for the rest of the game when Howard commits his next foul. And this free throw goes through for Randy Miller, Jr. And Jr. now has 15. Make it 16 after he sends this free throw. And it's 80 to 75. Coming over with six, six minutes to go here in regulation. Out of the double team, the cross court pass. And wide open, I don't know. Wide open for a reason. Yeah, that was the, I mean, he shot that one from Farragut North. There's a very odd feeling about this point of the ball game. It feels a little like Howard has conceded. I don't know if it's nostalgia about the last home game or what, but it feels like there's two minutes left and it's a 10 point ball game. Is that just me? I don't know. The crowd has gone extremely flat. Yeah, just, I will see that. And the crossover, the drive, and that's an offensive foul. Yes, it was. Seemed like that time as he turned the corner, uh, Jordan Perkins just kind of let the forearm shiver go. And you got to be a little bit more discreet if you want that to work. Maybe it's me, but I think... Agreed. No, I agree. Yeah, you know. So here comes Cole. Cole has his pass stolen away and on the breakaway is Fennell. He has his pocket kick, but cleaning up after the mistake is Jordan Perkins. And it's 82 to 75. Racing it up quickly right now is RJ Cole. He kicks it to the wing. Three ball off the mark. Cap is true this time by Cousins. And a quick timeout for Kevin Nickelberry. It'll be a full timeout for the Bison. As they burn one before the final media timeout. This is absolutely still a ball game, but I think that was the first real spark of life I've seen from the Bison in a minute. With 5.17 to go, a five point ball game. I'm not mad at the shot by Bethea. I appreciate the intensity in terms of offensive rebounding and second chance points by Zion Cousins there. You got to get some stops on defense and stop turning the ball over. I mean, you're allowing the Eagles to get going in transition without having to do any real work. So, quick game reset. North Carolina Central up 82-77. With five minutes and 17 seconds left to go in regulation, Howard is now down to their last timeout. North Carolina Central has three. As a very big moment or big stat in how this game is going to finish. Alternating possession right now, however, is the way of the Bison. You're right. This, I think this is where a home court advantage gives you a couple of baskets. How to use those baskets from the energy of their crowd right now. And I don't know if the crowd is a little, uh, for lack of a better term, punch drunk. From being on the Where's edge, the word? I didn't hear you. Punch drunk. Oh, okay. You know, kind of like a, a, a boxer. Mm-hmm. That steps into the ring a little woozy, even though he hadn't been hit. I'm just wondering, is that the case with the fans right now? Who sort of seen scenarios like this play out all season long. Cross court skip pass now. 
Bergens with it. Picks up his dribble. Gets it to Blunt. On the wing, it's Randy Miller, and we'll have a whistle. And this whistle goes against Howard. Raymond Mathea Jr., the freshman guard from Atlantic City, picks up his second. And now both teams in that super bonus right now. Two free throws for the remaining 451 of this game. And the first free throw is true for Zakari Douglas. And CJ Williams checks back in as Ronald Bethea checks out. And the second one up, the second one rattles home. So, 84-77. 450, less than 450 to go right now. RJ Cole with the drive to split the defenders and the tipsy do it does not fall. But he draws two free throws. And that foul goes against Larry McKnight. And for McKnight, it's his first. So Cole looking to cut this seven point deficit to five if he can make both free throws. First one up, first one true. 84, 78. Lead down, cut to six here at the front. So Cole with one more. Takes his customary three dribbles. Bends at the knee, stare at the square, splash. 84-79, 440 to go here in regulation. A slow walk into the offensive zone now for Perkins. Perkins drops it off for Randy Miller. Miller gets it back from Perkins on the right. To the left they go with it. Back to the right, Miller to the baseline. Taking it on the inside, using his shoulder Ooh. to clear out was Nick Fennell. And they call Chad Lott for the foul that time. And back to the charity strike goes North Carolina Central. And it's Nick Fennell at the free throw line. First one up, it rims off. First attempt is no good. Substitution for the vice number four, Raymond Bethea Jr. So Bethea Jr. checks in. As Chad Lott checks out. Well, check that, that's a lot that's still in the contest. I believe that's Cousins have checked out. And Cole will bring it up for Howard. With the Bison trailing by six. And the floating runner this time by Cousins is too strong. And the rebound cleared by Blunt. Blunt has done everything. He's having an all me act night tonight. I think we've been jacking up his name. Is it Blunt? I just realized that. Well, let's be Blunt. <laughs> He's been a grown man tonight. And now wow. off the beautiful wow. key, Blunt finds the cutter, McKnight. And it's 87-79. That was a great pass. And it's getting a little crazy here if you're a fan of the Bison. Lot, ball fake. Spins out of trouble, back into more trouble. And the scrum is collected by Larry McKnight. And he calls timeout for North Carolina Central. And you know your night is going well when your coach comes out Darn near the midcourt to give you some dab, and that's what Lavelle Moten just did to Mr. Blunt. Three minutes, 32 seconds up to go in regulation. North Carolina Central 87. Howard at 79. HBC basketball. Registry is because the lack of African American representation on the registry is our responsibility to register. This is something.
One of the main reasons I did decide to join the registry is because the lack of African American representation on the registry is our responsibility to register. This is something that we can control. You can do this. Think about if it was your child. Think about if it was your sister. Don't let fear be the only reason that you don't save a life. If you're paying Howard right now, you're hoping for stops. You're paying North Carolina Central, protect the basketball and do what you've done. Central with the basketball in the front court right now. And we're post the three minute mark to go here in regulation. Eagles look nursing on eight point lead and into the lane off the drive that time, Randy Miller, he takes a hard foul. Raymond McKay Jr. is third. And Raymond McKay Jr. picks up his third foul. Boy, it seems like it's been a month of Sunday since Howard has scored. Yeah, I told you, the vibe is like really odd. And the first three throws falls, Howard has gone scoreless for the last minute and 36 seconds of playing time. They're one for eight on their last not at last eight three-pointers. Oh, the wraparound and R.J. Cole finishes lovely R. at the J. rim. Oh. Man, the shake, the shimmy. The wrap around and the kiss. That's the energy that Kevin Nicholsberry's group needs to find. More of that. He and Williams now both with 22. They've got 44 and Howard's 81. If they trail by eight as we go inside of two and a half to the baseline. Swing outside for Central. Drive the pull up. It's a little bit too strong. And it lands in the hand of Central. And a big three <laughs> knockdown by Jordan Perkins. Oh, man. Which makes it an 11-point game. It's been that kind of day for the Eagles. The officials are going to review. And I think they're going to review to see whether or not it was a three ball. But whatever the case it may be. It was a be. three. They're checking the, the shot clock. It was definitely oh, oh, a three. Really? They're checking the shot clock. Wow. Back that's, the a, night. that's a backbreaker right there. Indeed. And now you start seeing that slow walk to the exit. Man. And Williams has been missing an action in the second half. Unofficially, I've got him with like two points in the second half. You say only 22 points. Well, he had 20 in the first half, I do believe. So Cole is going to bring in. He's fouled on his way up, and he draws two shots. And despite the incredulous look on his face, Jordan Perkins picks up a foul for the second time for the Eagles. And it'll send the preseason MEAC Player of the Year, R.J. Cole, to the charity side for two shots. As Cole puts it up, puts it through. Don't forget those of you checking us out right now on the HSR and mobile app. We're on our way to Charlotte next week for the CIAA basketball tournament for the next to last time in Charlotte. I'll have the semis and the finals starting a week from Friday on the voice of HBCU Sports. Pressure in the backcourt by Howard. Central beats it. And they quickly with the skip pass get the ball to Nick Fennell. He drops it back to Jordan Perkins. Coming out to get it right now is Miller. Miller with the stutter step move. 
Cousins grabs him, and there's a foul. And Zion Cousins picks up the foul. And that's number four on him. But you're right. In many respects, Monica, it almost looks as though Howard is raising the white flag. Yeah, Coach Nichols very was yelling out. I said, don't foul. And I get it. You don't foul if you're going to play intense defense. You don't foul on purpose. But to just kind of go through the motions didn't seem like it was adding up. And the second one, a person goes up and through for Randy Miller. And Miller, who's just been solid. Miller, in many respects, it seems like he's the Chad Lott for this team. You know, he just does a little sum of everything, and then yeah. all of a sudden, look up, he's got 21 points. Agreed. <laughs> he's got three rebounds. He's got a couple of assists. So he's done a little sum of everything, which has dramatically impacted the game. For sure. Lott with the wraparound. Into the offensive zone. Will step back outside. Launch the three. No good. Rebound cleared that time by Larry McKnight. And it would appear that with a minute and 42 seconds left to go, Howard's still playing the double team. Wow, elbow that time. And the ball stolen away by McKay in the backcourt. Cole to Williams. The alley oop. The lot is good. And a quick timeout call by Kevin Hickenberry with his team trailing 94-83. 30 second timeout. Nice little kiss that time off the alley. Not quite the oop. 60 second timeout. I want to thank uh, Athletic minutes. Director Terry Davis and his staff, Ariel Germain, Derek Bryant, the Sports Information Director, Coach Kevin Nickelberry, Assistant Coach Keith Kutcher. Ricky Bell, Sarai, and everybody associated with Howard University's basketball program for making our stage at least in the early part of this semester. So we want to be a part of this season. And of course, North Carolina Central just looking like they always do in the middle of February. They just, you know, I don't want to use this as an uh, 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 attempt to, uh, you know, lobby for anybody. But there's the next step in the evolution of coaching. And I kind of think that LaVell, LaVell Moten is at that point where you need to see if he's really ready to X and L with the big boy. Are you saying he should leave? I'm not saying he should. I'm, think, I'm, I'm thinking that, you know. He's worthy of a bigger opportunity? Yeah. Okay. Because we saw what happened a few years ago, and I apologize because the name escapes me, but the coach that took Norfolk to the NCAA tournament when they won the, um, I think they beat Florida in the first round. Oh, no, they beat Tulsa with Frank, Frank Hayes. And they have an over in back call. And then he immediately got a job, I believe, at uh, Super Florida, Florida International. Um, he's done a pretty successful job. I think the next coach up, certainly at the MIAC, would have to be Lavelle Moten. CJ or RJ Cole tries to lock it and unlock, bails him out. They swing the foster. He knocks down the jumper. Oh, so the Bison were going for the dramatics tonight. Well, we'll check that. That's Kyle Foster. It's a six point game, and we'll have a whistle. Mm. I, I meant to say that the crowd didn't like that call, but where was this noise when the game was closer? We well, get some energy. You know, I'm not going to blame the fans per se because I think fans have to feed off what the team is trying to give, and I thought the team was sleepwalking for a stretch. They did seem to hit a wall. And speaking of hitting, 
Randy Miller just hit the free throw to make it a seven point game, 95-88. That's a lane violation. And then a lane violation by North Carolina Central. And Howard clings to plausible life. Inside a minute to go. Cole loses it, gets it back. Out of the double team, he gets it to Lott. Lott gonna penetrate, throw it up off the glass, no good. Put back by Williams, he's good. Howard has no more timeout, so they double team quickly in the backcourt. Racing it up the near sidelines right now is Miller, who's cut off. Runs into a triple team, and that'll be a foul. Definitely didn't have to slap down on that. We had three guys on one and the half court line working in your favor. Gotta be disciplined. Easier said than done. I get it. I know. The frustration of CJ Williams in the backcourt right now. As to the strike right now for Zakari Douglas, and he makes the first. We'll check that. That would be Randy Miller at the line. Whatever the case may be, he scores. 96-90 is the count. And the second one rattles out. Howard trying to keep it a two-possession game. It's Cole, throws it up, no good. And the rebound lost, collected by North Carolina Central and a huge rebound by Jordan Perkins. And Central will race it back to the other end of the floor. So after taking the Florida two-step on the road and winning both games, how it looks like the North Carolina two-step is going to come in and get them twice. As at the free throw line, it's Jordan Perkins who could just about seal it here. First one up, bang! 97, 90, 24.47 seconds left to go here in regulation. Central clears the free throw line. And the second free throw goes through. 98, 90. And here's another air ball that's put up by Howard. And this one, a little keep away going on, and that's going to do it. And so the Central fan has a chance to celebrate. The Howard fan goes home disappointed. And 98 to 90 is the count. Howard falls to North Carolina Central in their final game at home. For the 2018-2019 campaign, and once again, we're talking a game that slipped through fingertips. Howard was in a position to win this game, or at least to make it close down the stretch, and it just fell apart. Great timeout somewhere in the neighborhood, I guess what? Somewhere between 12 and 7 minutes by LaBelle Moten. And then they went on the run to Central. And that just seemed to not only take the life out of Howard, it sucked the life out of the fans. And from then on, Howard's like that balloon that couldn't get off the ground. It felt that way. They've got another opportunity next week at Morgan State. And then maybe they will be energized on a neutral court come time for a conference tournament. Howard fans. If there is some solace in a disappointing loss, it is that it's a pretty good road team. They seem to focus on the road. They seem to bond and get away from the distractions. You know how it is sometimes. As much as you like sleeping in your own bed, you got to deal with your telephone ringing off the hook and everybody wanting to hook up. So Mark, you reliving your glory days. Man, <laughs> is that how it was for the, you? The distractions <laughs> can be overbearing sometimes when you're at home. But, uh, you know, back to the drawing board. I mean, how it is knocking on the door. They bang on the door. Sooner or later, you have to wonder if they'll ever find the key to unlock what's on the other side. Nonetheless, 
The final is 98-90 North Carolina Central over Howard University Central, and there's no doubt about this. The big story had to be uh, young Mr. Blunt. I mean, when you get right down to it, uh, 31 points, 9 of 14, 3 of 6 from beyond the three-point arc, 10 of 13 from the charity strike. That's as MVP as it gets. And who knows, by tomorrow, we could be talking about MIAC Player of the Week after a performance like that. Central also gets uh, 24 points from Miller in just a complete effort. Howard's backcourt, once again, C.J. Williams with 24 and R.J. Cole with 26. So 50 points between them, but it's not enough as Howard falls to 98-90. The Bison drop to 12-15, and 6-6 six and six in the MEAC. North Carolina uh, Central, pardon me, improves to 13-14, and 14, now 8-5 and five in the conference. Again, a special thank you to everybody associated with the Howard University Athletic Department for their hospitality during basketball season. We will.